I'm South Sea Dragon, and you're about to learn a whole bunch of facts about Brazilian cuisine. So sit back, grab some popcorn, or maybe even some authentic Brazilian pipoca, and enjoy this extremely informative video. So, starting off, the cookery of Brazil shows many aspects of the food of the Portuguese conquistadors and those of other European countries, but it also focuses a lot on the traditions of the native tribes, such as the Tupi people, which is, I guess, one of the Brazilian tribes who live in the native Amazon. So, many of the ingredients in Brazilian cuisine are plants native to the Amazon rainforest, which covers over 40% of the total landmass of Brazil. This is because the Brazilian Amazon tribes who lived in the area were forced to live off the materials they had at hand, which naturally became staples of their food. Brazilian foods also have a heavy focus on meat, because it is seen as part of their cultural identity in many cases, and several types of non-native meat are also seen as a luxury by many people living in the area. Fish is also very popular and important for the people in some parts of Brazil because of the huge and famous Amazon River. I mean, if you're living on a river, you're bound to start eating fish at some point because it's a primary resource there, as well as other lesser known rivers throughout since that's not the only big river in the Brazilian Amazon area and various cities near the ocean. Those poor little fishies though. A moment of silence for all the little guys that will be eaten today. <sighs> okay, moving on. So, interesting Brazilian foods include feoada, pau de queso, carulu, and brigadeiro. Or brigadeiro. Big, big. <sighs> I'm so sorry if I mess up any of these pronunciations. As you can probably tell, I'm not like a native Brazilian or something. So, first of all, Feoada is a beef and pork bean stew swirled up into one big old delicious schlop. In its regular Brazilian form, it's usually made with black beans, which, if you didn't know, look like this. If nothing else, you can tell your parents that the Big Foods is at least showing you images of healthy things. And I think that makes me a good role model. So it's said that the dish of feoada is was invented by people enslaved to the Portuguese, but some historians believe it was invented before this in northern Portugal by some other people, some Portuguese people. Either way, it's a Brazilian icon and it's actually known as the national dish of Brazil. So it comes from humble origins, but it's the main dish of the entire country. So, yeah. Then Pão de queso is basically just a lump of cheesy dough which can be created with either sugary sweet tapioca powder or squelchingly sour tapioca powder. Either way, you come out with a yummy little bite of cheese which you can munch on until your little che cheesy dreams have been fulfilled. Or um, something like that. It's also often eaten with a humid, milky, chocolatey substance called chocolate milk. You may have heard of it. So, yeah, that's a thing. By the way, of course, everyone knows what chocolate milk is. Right? Right? Yeah, uh huh. So, moving on, next we have karuru. And you cannot tell me that that is not one of the most fun to say things that you could think of at this moment. Say it with me, come on. Karuru. I mean, yeah. So, anywho, karuru is a sauce like type of food made of okra, palm oil, onions, and toasted nuts all mashed up into one by some crazy or brilliant chef. Fun fact, there's also a town named Karuru in the nearby country of Colombia. Obviously, that's also in South America. So, Karuru. Yeah. It's similar to the feoada, but it's not the national dish, and it includes nuts instead of beans, and shrimp instead of beef. Last but not least, we have the Brigadeiro, undoubtedly the most popular Brazilian sweet, which I've talked about in a previous Fun Food Facts article, actually, on thebigfoods.com. So if you didn't know, Fun Food Facts is a series where I teach you about the many different foods from all over the world. One could say it was a sort of precursor to food around the world. Recently, I published my first article in forever, a bit about Ratatouille, which, not just a movie, it's food, if you're weren't educated about this particular subject, which I know it's a bit random, but 
I am, because I work for the big foods. So if you're even mildly interested, you should go check that all out right now. The link will be in the description, assuming future me doesn't forget. Wow, I got sidetracked. So about Brigadero, they were named after a brave Brazilian pilot who fought as a hero during World War II. To reward his efforts, he was immortalized forever in pastry form, and now you're hearing about his legacy on a tiny YouTube channel run by children. Eduardo, we apologize for being such a disgrace to your memory. Now onto our fun food fact segment of the video. For starters, although it's thought that the people of Central and South America, and also Mexico obviously, are vastly superior to us at how much spice they can take, us being people of the United States. Many of the people in Brazil are actually not quite accustomed to consuming spicy dishes, but in Bahia and a few other selected areas, they do like their food much spicier than I think I could ever withstand. Brazilians make up for their lack of spice with an overflowing fountain of sweetness in their desserts, and you can find many a delicious treat in Brazilian bakery, many of which you have probably never heard of such as, well I'm gonna try to get these pronunciations right, queadina, acai, bainho de coco, cocado, bolo de rolo, and several others. Brazil has also been the top coffee producer in the world for over 150 years. That's, that's crazy. 150 years. Wow. Can't even get a grasp on that. And it's the country's official drink, too, since it's the main producer of it. And, I mean, what would the world be like today without coffee? Even if you just, I, you either love it or you hate it, but most people, at least in the U.S., rely heavily on coffee for their general existence. People being adults, like little toddlers shouldn't be running around just slurping coffee, screaming their heads off about how excited they are. Brazilians, act, Braz, Brazilians actually really enjoy pizza as well, is what I was trying to say, with Sao Paulo being one of the biggest pizza-eating cities on the planet, beaten only by New York City, I assume. So, that? Who associates Brazil and pizza? I know I didn't, but... Maybe you did, maybe you're just a genius. Or you just live in Brazil and love pizza. I don't know. I don't know what our audience is. Lunch is typically considered to be the most important meal of the day in Brazil, whereas in America, the false belief has been started that breakfast deserves this title. And honestly, I believe that this American thing is a whole abomination because I strongly agree with these Brazilian people. They have the right idea. Lunch is definitely the most important meal of the day. And if anyone, doesn't agree with me, or if they do agree with me, you can put in the comments why you believe otherwise, or you can just put in the Big Boots forum if you can't comment on YouTube for some reason. So yeah, I would like to hear your argument as to why you don't think lunch is the most important meal of the day. Most likely you've just been influenced by the American propaganda that cereal companies have made about breakfast being the most important meal of the day so they can sell their stuff better. Finally, did you know that guarana, a Brazilian fruit used to make juice, actually contains more coffee than coffee beans themselves, which again, are one of the main crops of Brazil since it's the biggest producer since 150 years ago, more than that actually. But these little fruits, if you chop them open, they look like eyeballs, which have caused many indigenous myths and beliefs to form. Beliefs, did I say believes? <laughs> I don't know. So. One of these myths actually concerns, like, some sort of dead guy whose eyeballs got plucked out, and as a compensation for that guy's family, um, he, or some sort of benevolent god, planted his eyeballs and they grew into this- it's- it's kind of morbid, but it- they grew into a tree which grew these guarana plants. So, yeah. I- think that they should they probably taste really good and they're put in a lot of very popular energy drinks because yeah and so those are all the facts we're going to be covering today if you want to see another video about a european country's cuisine or you just like food like any other sane human person go down and click the three most important buttons on your screen like subscribe and turn on notifications Anyway, enough of the YouTuber ramble. Thank you so very much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. And...
Rashab says peace. Thank you.